This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, my name is Greg Waitley with CTC and Associates. I'm the Clear Roads Administrator. Uh, we're here for the final webinar for the project entitled Measuring the Efficiencies of Tow Plows and Wing Plows. Uh, the research effort uh, was led by the University of California Davis team uh, of uh, Ty Lasky and Dwayne Bennett. Uh, before I turn it over to the research team, uh, I want to let everybody know that this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Clear Roads website at a later date for viewing at your convenience. We also ask that everybody stay on mute today so that there's no background noise. Uh, also, I think if you're not speaking, please have your camera turned off because that's also going to free up some bandwidth. Uh, however, if you do um, have any comments or questions, please enter them into the chat box and we'll address them at the end of the presentation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Ty. Thanks, Greg. Uh, morning, everybody. Uh, first off, thanks for your interest uh, in attending today. Uh, I think some of you also thank you for, I suspect, there's been some participation already in the project by way of the survey that we sent out. Uh, so Greg's already, you, you obviously know the title of the project and all that. We're with the Advanced Highway Maintenance and Construction Technology Research Center, or the AHMCT Research Center at University of California, Davis. Uh, I'm the uh, PI on the project. Dwayne Bennett was the engineer on the project and did pretty much all the work. And okay, try that again. So this is kind of a quick overview of how we expect the, the webinar to go today. Uh, because I think a fair number of you are probably not very familiar with this, with this, the research center. I'm going to give you a quick summary. Uh, it'll be a brief overview of the overall project. And then I'm going to go through part of the user's guide. Uh, that's the user's guide for the decision support tool. Uh, and then Dwayne's going to show the tool in action, go through some examples, and he's going to finish up going through the user's guide at the same time. Uh, I don't know if, if logistically it works, but it, you certainly can feel free to ask questions along the way directly or obviously into the chat. And I think we'll have time at the end for discussion. So about the center, we're roughly 30 years old. Um, and a real short summary is that we don't tend to do theoretical research. We want to do deployment focused research. We want to get uh, systems out into the field. Those systems might be ones that we design and develop. They might be things that a DOT, by the way, our primary customer is or sponsor is always Caltrans. We work for other DOTs as well, but it's usually Caltrans. Uh, so somebody might want to look at a new technology, a new type of sand spreader or a new front end loader or something like that. We will do evaluations for those. Again, whether it's our system or a commercial system, the goal is to try and get it deployed, assuming it passes the evaluation. Um, focus is, first and foremost, has always been on safety, uh, but we quickly learned we better look at efficiency as well because you kind of have to get some gains there in order for things to get deployed. Um, Mobility and reliability, of course, and then over, I mean, we've always been looking at environmental impacts, but that's on the rise these days as we're bringing in some new young faculty. Um, closer to what we did for this project would be like software and database tools, uh, also looking at workflows, manual updates, guidance, these kinds of things. And we have a set of technical skills in robotics, automation, sensing, programming, et cetera. But again, the key thing is what we do, we, try, we, we focus on applied research. We want to get things deployed. We, generally, we like to use off-the-shelf components if we can. There's benefits for everyone. And this is just measures of success. And I won't go through all this because we've sort of just talked about a lot of it, but it, it, the, the bottom three, I think, map into this project is deploying software databases. Here, it's, a, it's software, it's on the, and uh, 
modifying workflows, uh, business practices. And I think that's where this tool that we developed will come in. By the way, that on the right, you'll see that uh, a few times today. That's the, the main screenshot, the user interface for the decision support tool. So this is, um, we work across the board in maintenance, operations, construction, uh, surveys uh, for DOTs. But in the winter maintenance uh, side, uh, this is, I think, all or almost all of the projects we've done over the years. Uh, we kind of kicked in very early on in uh, about 1998 doing snow plow driver assistance. So um, helping with steering and collision, obstacle detection, collision warning. And that kind of, um, that flowed out of our work with the um, National Automated Highway Systems Consortium. So this was a way of looking at those technologies, but in something that could be used in the shorter term. Uh, Dwayne was involved in all of our previous tow plow evaluations, and that was over about roughly about 2012 to 2018. I think that was two projects. Um, one of our big uh, system developments, and I'd, I'd say it's a recent success, it's taken a while, um, was the um, Mountain Pass Road opening. And we did final deployment last spring. This was actually with John Oliva's group at Caltrans up in, uh, uh, I think it was District 9 or District 10, I think it was. If I got that wrong, my apologies. Um, we did prototype work on that over many years. I think it goes back to um, 2005. I, yeah, that's a long time. Um, but anyways, it's it's been a lot of prototype work, testing, getting feedback from the, the from the operators, and refining and bringing in new technologies. And finally, last spring we deployed eight systems. Those are now in use in Caltrans. We're going to probably be doing one last support slash training effort this spring. That's what we think is happening. But that kind of gives an idea of this you know focus on deployment can be a prolonged process and that's when it's successful um last one on the list is this project which was i think 2020 till now uh again i don't know if this is technically well supported but if anybody had any questions at this point uh feel free just a second and I'll go ahead. Okay, so now we're really into this current project. So it's measuring efficiency of tow plows and wing plows. And I would say, and I think this was based on the RFP and our proposal, there was really two main goals. It was an understanding of life cycle costs, real world life cycle costs, benefits and efficiencies of tow plows and wing plows. And that would include maintenance, operations, and storage and developing of tools. And I think that's where the key payoff ended up coming out on this uh, for decision-making and procurement. And that was the decision support tool, best practices. And the way this ended up working out, and I'm not certain that everyone's realized this at the beginning, maybe not us as well, was that this, this decision support tool probably turned out to be like the key deliverable and it's where we're gonna focus a lot today. So this was the um, tasks. I won't go through and deal with the first couple of tasks. We're looking at uh, state of practice and what's out in the literature. Uh, and that state of practice included a survey of the DOTs. Again, I think some of you probably participated. Thank you for your feedback. Um, then we developed recommendations and test plan for moving forward. Uh, a lot of the focus there was on looking at roadway types and geometries for the subsequent analysis. And then this is where the real technical development started kicking in as we looked at some simulations based on the prior results. Uh, and then there was a peer review of the subcommittee for those results. We made some adjustments. Uh, we dealt, developed a methodology for efficiency analysis, and that methodology is at the core of the task seven, which is the decision support tool. Uh, the tool itself was developed in Excel. 
there's logic and, and decision making behind the scenes with BBA. Um, and there was a best practices guide and then the final report, the webinar. Now, that was tasks one through nine. Um, at the outset, there was no task 10, uh, but based on the results of the decision support tool, uh, we talked with the subcommittee, everybody said, that, look, this is really useful, but to make it more useful and more likely to get deployed, we really should have a user's guide. So the, the scope was extended, I think it was four months, I believe. Um, and task 10 was added in and we'll be talking about we'll show you some of the user's guide today and that's available or soon will be for your download uh, the, on the right just a screenshot from the best practices interim report most of these tasks had an interim report i think five through seven was combined in one interim report um, the best practices guide now has its own interim report as well and so this was the schedule and it's those, um, I guess it was six months. Uh, the last six months, they're highlighted in yellow. That was the extended period. Um, and task 10 was added in, that was the, ex the added task. Um, and I think as with your normal Clear Roads projects, Greg made sure that we had um, in the schedule time for us doing the task and then appropriate amount of time for the subcommittee to do its review and I, I, that certainly worked out very well in this case again i uh, jump in if you need to i think it's just awkward with the with the uh, go to meeting so um yeah before i do go on i want yeah thanks to everybody on the team um i mean thanks to Dwayne. obviously he did a lot of the heavy technical work but that's, I think, a given. Uh, the subcommittee was excellent. Uh, it was great to work with them. And we always, um, we try to take a similar approach in our projects because we're, you know, we may be technical experts, but we're not the, ex we're not the subject experts. And we also don't know the problem uh, as well as su the subcommittee would. And of course, to Doug for being the champion on the subcommittee and for the project. Greg did a, outstanding job as a project manager uh he's always been really helpful for us um i think we did get a little bit of help off and on from others in the ctc team uh the one i know of was susan johnson uh she did some uh work on developing the final uh summary of the project and i think i did i missed uh i can't remember the name uh helped with extracting the um the best practices guide into an individual document. So thank, thank you as well. Sorry for not listing you. Um, finally, the uh, the min dot uh, contracts team as well. Um, so we're not going to go through the whole project. I want to get just focus on what I what we think is most useful to the DOTs and most likely to be deployed and used in the future. Um, really, it's the decision support tool or the DST. Um, and then coupled with that is the user's guide. It, I think, you know, Dwayne and I were using this thing and it was became second nature for the most part and seemed obvious. And then we realized it wasn't that obvious and having a user's guide was uh, advisable so there that's where we went um, best practices guide I would say is also a key deliverable it's it's helpful in determining where to deploy the plows and configurations looking at cost effectiveness and efficiency it couples in again with the decision support tool um, and we're not really going to go through it today there is the individual report and I think to be, you know honestly it's just if you, you it's it's better to read through it's not it's not very long and it kind of, I think the decision support tool is meant um, as a tool that you can use to execute the kinds of things that you see in the best practices guide. Uh, and I, that report, I think, is already available on the project side. And then everything else, either the final report or interim reports, if, if you're interested. 
So this is a bit of overview on the decision support tool, and we'll look at it a little more once I get into the user's guide. So we're looking at snow plowing efficiencies and also life cycle costs. Um, we want to, we, we do, the method is there to analyze current plow development deployment strategies and project cost benefits. Um, and that the projections are when you're thinking about deploying new, new types of plows or procuring new types of plows. Uh, there's configurable co libraries for the plows, plow configurations for operating costs and also for routes. And we'll, we'll go into those. Most of that, I think Dwayne is gonna be showing you. Uh, and then at the end, um, the goal is to, if you put in a certain set of plows, uh, one of the most obvious things is to just, for a given road configuration, look at the daily operating costs and find the one that's the minimum, or find a list of like the, the lowest, the lowest cost, maybe five or 10 configurations. The tool will do these things for you. So the tool does, so there's, we wanna be clear what it does do, but there's also the next slide is what it doesn't. Um, so it's gonna rank cost efficiency for these groups of plows uh, of differing types. Uh, it'll let you do the customized plow routes and segments. Um, and you can, change the plow configurations. So what we, what we did, and Dwayne will show this, is we provided um, template or sample configurations for each fundamental type of plow, like a head plow or a wing plow or a toe plow, et cetera. And you would modify those rather than trying to input your own from scratch. Uh, you can update costs, performance, and service data. And again, it, the tool will calculate the costs of for a configuration. It also calculates average time to plow the user-defined route. Okay, here's the does not do. So it's, I think this is important to keep in mind. It's, it's, not, it's a tool for you. It's not meant to just explicitly solve best deployment groups for the entire roadway. You, your superintendents, your people are still the best ones to do that, but the tool can help in some ways. Uh, and again, it doesn't arrange the plows within a plowing group. So if you said you had two head plows and a winged plow, it'll do the calculation, but it's not telling you what, you know, which one starts on the left and which one's on the right, for example. Um, and it doesn't work for specific DOT plow operating costs. When we look through this, and Dwayne's been doing this for a long time, is each of the DOTs has some differing issues. We tried to develop it in a way that it's, it's generically applicable, but you're still gonna need to factor in some things. You know, if you must have, say, you know, something, a spreader combined with one of your plows or with all of your plows, this tool's not telling you that, okay. Uh, and it, doesn't account for really odd plowing applications. Um, last thing is, this is really meant to be used at what in California we would call a yard or some you know fairly local regional level. It's not meant to be addressing all of the plows in this in a DOT's fleet, even for a small state. So. This is actually, this is a shot from the user's guide. You'll see this again, but basically on the left, that's the user's guide sections. And if you were to click on one of those, so you click on, uh, you know, running analyses, it will jump to that section of the user's guide. The user's guide is in PowerPoint, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. And then there's ways to navigate back to this screen. You can, of course, you can also just, it's, it is still PowerPoint. You can just start at the beginning and go straight from the front to the back. Uh, so that's kind of the end of the overview. The next thing is I'm going to um, look at the first part of the user's guide up to up to about where it makes sense to be jumping back and forth to the decision support tool. Once we reach that, 
then I'm going to we'll switch it over and Dwayne will do the rest and do some examples with the rest of the user's guide. Now there are, I think, Greg, I assume I'm going to send you the um, presentation and I'm guessing it will either be posted or, or distributed. So I did include the links for the, for the decision support tool and the user's guide. Um, I would, both of those are going to be um, updated before the end of the project, which is December or January 31st. Uh, there were, Greg, just for your info, we saw a little formatting issues in the decision support tool. Everything was correct, but there were some things that it made sense to clarify in the formatting. So I'll be sending you that. And related to that, uh, we did make some updates to the decision, the user's guide. So I'll send you both of those. Um, I think the, well, probably next week, possibly today. Uh, but anyways, these links will be to those. I would suggest wait till like February 1st, in my opinion. Uh, and that's the end of this part of the webinar. Um, let me see. And so now what I'm going to do is start looking through the user's guide. So this is not, this isn't a separate, it's not really a PowerPoint presentation. This is the user's guide. It just happens to be in PowerPoint. So if you get the user's guide, this is it. This is exactly it. Okay. Um, And again, I think I've already talked about this, but if you look at the image on the right, you can see where the different, the buttons for the different sections will hop to those sections. So it gives you ability to kind of navigate to something. It's like a table of contents, sort of, with hot links. Um, and there are videos in the user's guide. Uh, this is one of the less dynamic ones, but basically, uh, let me just do something here. So, so you can just jump a little forward here. So this was showing where you get to the end of a section. If you click that, it'll bring you back to the main category page, I think. Yeah. Uh, and we'll we'll illust I'll illustrate that directly. Anyways, just watch for the videos in the uh, in the guide. And where there are videos, that's probably where Dwayne's going to be doing some live demonstrations rather than just showing you some videos. Um, so let me just, so like for example, if I were to say go to the installation guide, but there we are. And if I want, I can run through that. We'll come back to this in a minute. And now I want to go back to the main category page. I do that. Or again, you all know how to advance a slide in PowerPoint. You can just keep going through. Um, so let's just some of this. Um, so we've already really gone through the general description. Uh, this shows the key components of the decision support tool. Um, so the primary thing you'll work with is the user interface, which allows you to allocate which plows you're looking at in your analysis. There, you need to set up your plow route, and that consists of segments, roadway segments, and nodes. Uh, all that's explained in a lot of detail in the route section, and I think Dwayne's going to go through that. Uh, but I mean, if you think about just segments, are just stretches of of consistent roadway, so a long stretch of three lane highway. Uh, nodes will be your interchanges, maybe roundabouts, these kinds of things. Or, or where if you went from three lanes down to two, there would be a node there. Um, so again, what we're doing is looking at clearing what it takes to clear lanes to the right, clear lanes to the left, and then when there are diverged lanes, so off ramps, on ramps, 
what it takes to clear those to the right and the left. And in general, the, the piece of interest for any segment is going to be the widest point because that's the most challenging point. We want to make sure that the set of plows that you do uh, do your analysis for can achieve the widest clearing. Um, because if not, then it doesn't make sense to use them. Um, and you can't, I don't think you can really see it well. Maybe, probably Dwayne will go through this a bit. But while on the user interface, again, we give you the lowest cost configuration for a given uh, roadway and given set of plows. That one may or may not, even though it's lowest cost, there's times where it won't be the best. And this is one of the places where human input and human expertise is really important. So what we do to support that, you can see that that sort of really small print uh, listing on the right there. This was from one analysis. We looked at a set of plows and we're looking at how, what does it take to clear the through lanes, the main highway lanes, clear it to the right. At the very top, after the heading, of course, is the cost for the lowest cost and what is that configuration. But then you've got the, the subsequent uh, configurations and their cost. And there may be a reason that for a specific DOT or for a specific yard, you can't use the lowest cost, but maybe the second or the third makes sense. And they're not, maybe they're not that different. Uh, another where place this could come in handy is you might have a situation where you're looking at through lanes, diverged lanes, left and right clearing, all of that, and a particular configuration will not be the lowest cost for any of them, but it might be the lowest cost overall. Our tool was never meant to do that, but it's a fairly easy thing for uh, a person to look at and say, oh, yeah, this is great. This one comes in number two every time, whereas this one that was the lowest for a certain part of the analysis is like the 10th lowest cost somewhere else. So it's those kinds of decisions that, again, I think humans can make better than tools. The tool just helps. Um, let's see, where are we at? So life cycle costs, I'm going to let Dwayne talk about this in a bit more detail, but again, this is part of the analysis. It's part of the analysis, I think, particularly when you're looking at procurements, I would, in my opinion, uh, but, but Dwayne, you can elaborate. Uh, again, we've gone through this. We've gone through that. That's some contacts. So again, Doug's a champion for the project. Greg was the project manager, and I am or was the principal investigator. And I don't know how this goes beyond the um, once you know we're quote out of contract. But I'm always happy to answer questions. I don't. I assume I don't know who'd be the right one to contact, but Greg or Doug can clarify that. Um, so little bit about the installation. So it is just an Excel spreadsheet file. Um, we tested with Excel 2016. We didn't test any other version. I believe it would work for later. I don't know if it would work for earlier. Um, I will warn you ahead of time that, and I think you all know this better than I do, that each of the DOTs has its own IT policies. So what you need to do to be able to put an Excel file on your system and run it uh, via a web download is dependent on your DOT. Um, probably, it's probably okay. I think the key question is if they'll let you run macros. I said, I'm assuming you guys can share Excel files. Okay, so this is the link for the decision support tool. Um, and again, it is actually, there's, I think if you go to the project website, there's a link you can just click. So you don't necessarily need to know 
that detail. Um, and I don't know if Greg's going to update it. If, if I send him this reformat version, I don't know if it's going to be dash three instead of two. That's, uh, so I've got the link pasted in. I do that and it just downloaded the file, hopefully to my desktop. And it's an XLSM file because it has macros. Um, let's see, so there it is. So um, let me just do this. So I have in advance, I made a folder to put it into. So I move it there. So that's the file. And um, if I run it, I'm not going to do much here. I just want to show you what happens at the outset rather than show you in the user's guide. So I think you can see this now. At the top, you get this yellow warning bar. And of course, depending on the version, it may look different. Depending on your macro settings or your security settings, you may or may not get this warning. Um, but basically, if you get this warning that the file has macros, there might be viruses, you want to do enable editing. And well, enable editing lets you just change things in the sheet. And I think that's just because I just downloaded it. That's why I think I got that warning. Now, this is about the macros and the security issues. And again, you have to enable the content. If you don't enable the content, the tool will not do anything. Okay, so now it's it's done up and running. I'm not going to run through any examples. Dwayne will do that. But again, you will see one or both of those. Um, let's see which one we have. Yeah, you'll see one or both of those probably. Uh, whether you do or not is not 100% within our control. Um, and again, if you get the macro warning and you can't enable the macros, that's a point where you're going to probably need to talk to your IT. Okay. Um, again, this is the same thing. It's just a little easier to see. So that's the warning for the for the um, that's the warning I think you get because you downloaded the file for the first time. And I suspect you wouldn't get this warning once you've accepted it the first time. So you're saying I'm gonna I'm gonna work with this file is all that's saying. This is the warning about the macros. I get it every time I open and run the file. So I just have to say enable the content. And again, sometimes I forget and like I'll click on the arrow to run the analysis and it just doesn't do anything. That's why. So if you still see that security warning sitting up there and nothing's happening, that's that's the thing to fix. Okay, I think we've gone through, yeah, we've gone through that. And again, the pieces kind of flow together. Um, there's the plot, there's the user interface. Everything goes through the user interface. That's where you do your analysis. That's where you see your results. Uh, but a lot of that is driven from the other pages. They're actually sheets within Excel. And that includes the plow configurations, it includes plow operating costs, it includes plow route definitions, and segment definitions, or segment definitions and node definitions, I should say, which comp compose the route. Okay. And in the user interface, you see these big yellow buttons. Those, if you just click on those, they will take you to the individual, to, like if you click on plow operating costs, you'll go to that sheet and you can do that. Word of warning, and this is something we've never figured out, uh, sometimes you gotta click twice, sometimes you have to click away from the button and then click again. It seems to be just a, an Excel thing. It's, it, there's nothing to do, this is nothing to do with like the background VBA because that's not even happening. Um, that's just the quick and easy advice on how to get around. So if you click on it, nothing happens. I would click another cell and then click again. Sorry, but I don't. We don't know how to fix that. Um, and then uh, again, Dwayne's going to go through this, but you'll have your your various plow types, 
and you're going to put in the quantities for what you want to analyze. Either it's like your existing set of plows, or you're thinking about taking your existing set and adding in one or two of something, like maybe a tow plow, for example, or you just want to look at some wildly divergent configuration. Um, the bottom tells you the statistics for the route as you have set it up. Obviously, that I think there will be something in the tool when you open it the first time, but it won't be your route. I think it was actually based on something from Doug. Uh, and then, again, you, in the bottom of the user interface, you'll see this. After you run the analysis, it's going to tell you what was the best configuration, the, lo the lowest cost configuration. So. Uh, in the current case, there e there was no need to solve for clear left of the through lanes or clear right or left of diverged lanes. But for the through lanes clearing right, it has solved, and the lowest cost configuration is daily cost of about $3,300. Again, if you want to see more than just the lowest cost, then you click see the full list and it takes you to that list that I showed you earlier. And again, that's that detailed list on the bottom right there. Um, and in each of those detailed lists, there's a button to jump back to the user interface. And there's a label that tells you kind of where you're at. You know that these are the configurations for the through lanes clearing to the right. Because it, it's, it's, it would be not difficult to be a little lost, I think. And again, I'm going to let Dwayne talk through the bulk of the life cycle stuff. And I think, I think we are at the point where Dwayne will take over. So, Greg, if you could switch yeah. it over to... Sounds good. I'm going to do that right now. Hey, Dwayne, you should have been made. Oh, hold on a second. There you go. You should have been made presenter. <clears throat> and while Dwayne is setting that up, I will say that the uh, links, as uh, Ty alluded to, the links in the presentation, um, I think they are correct right now. Um, in fact, while they were running through this, I realized the user's guide was not up on the project page. But, um, and, and he did say that he'd be sending along some more final versions of those. Uh, and when he does, I will make sure that those are uploaded as well. Uh, but right now the uh, decision support tool and the decision support tool user's guide are uploaded to the project page. So really all you need to do is just go to the project, right? Through our sortable list of research projects, just go to 1903 uh, and get it there. But also um, like with all of our projects that have uh, final products, you know, tools, guides, things like that. Those will all be searchable under the subject base, uh, under the topics pages um, uh, of uh, that, we, that you can access through um, the research projects tab, research by topic under there. Uh, and so you can get to it from different ways. So if you couldn't remember what the project title or number was, then you could just search through it by topic. So uh, anyway, great. Wayne, are you ready? It's like yeah, a, I think so. Okay, so I'm good. Put myself back on mute. Hopefully everybody can see the my my full screen that it's legible. I'm trying to keep the user guide and the um ESP open at the same time because I'm going to jump back and forth between the two. Um, uh, probably the uh, the DSG probably looks uh, pretty complex with with everything that's presented here. Uh, uh, but actually, it's it's, uh, it's the algorithm behind it is also uh, very complex, and and uh, Ty is kind of underplaying his, his role, but he was, uh, he was the one that was able to do the coding for the VBA to get the permutation part of this, uh, which is the really the algorithm that runs it all. Uh, he was the one that programmed that and got that working. Uh, so yeah, it looks complex. There's a lot of information presented here. Uh, but really what it comes down to, it's, it's just a really simple calculator where over here in this column, the uh, plow allocation, you, as Ty mentioned, you, you put in the number of plows that you're interested in adding and using in the analysis. 
and uh, you press the run button over here and then it, it displays the the most efficient uh, plot configuration it's you know it's just that simple um and it, it uh, uh and, and uh it's it's is using all the the, the support the, the data and the support libraries and so uh so that's where we're going to go next is it these these libraries contain default data and the, the users want to go is going to want to go in and customize this data uh, to represent the the plows that they have in their fleet and their operating costs and additionally you could add uh, plows that you're interested in getting uh, and then see how how they uh, uh, affect your the cost of plowing uh, so the the first step is usually to go and to configure the the plows and this is this is where you. Okay, what? There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, these uh, the 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 plot configuration library is configured with these different categories that are color coded, and each category kind of represents a, a type of plow. You know, you have your standard plow, uh, with either it's a head plow or a belly plow, and then you have your the telescoping plow, which I'm not sure anybody uses, but that's one of the options. That was um, one of the six plow configurations that the project wanted us to include. Then we have our wing plows down here. We have room for like six of them. And uh, then we have uh, tow plows. We have different types of tow plows. We have bi-directional and, and, uh, and uh, single direction. And then we have the multi-directional plowing where we have a tow plow with a wing plow which some states use. And then we even have this double wing plow that was added later. I think it was uh, one of the East Coast states uh, wanted us to use that as well. So the, so the user goes in and, uh, and you can click on, uh, all, all the cells are locked except the cells that you're able to uh, make changes to. And so in this case, you can you know, change the names to whatever you want to change them to. And then you can go in and you can change the, the values for the procurement costs and the, the cost of the plows, for procuring the plows. And then you also have the performance data where the plow, how wide the plow is able to clear. And then the direction that it can do, it can do a right, left, or a bi directional plow. And then you have to add in the uh, or estimate a service life and a salvage, salvage value, which comes in handy for the life cycle um, calculation. Then, if you make all your changes, uh, you, you return back to the user interface and you'll see here that now on the plow type, you change the name and any, and any, uh, 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 any plows we add will, will appear here. Um, you can't add any more plows that are already in the, the table, but you can leave them out. And that's why there's blanks because I didn't fill them all in. Um, the next step would then be to go once we created our plows configurations, we go in and now we add the operating costs. And so we I included uh, from our survey, we uh, added all the costs that we think uh, most DOTs have. And there's consumables in there. Uh, there's the seasonal uh, changeover costs. There's, uh, I think we even have a storage cost for the tow plows was, was added in. And then we have to add in, add in the average or uh, an estimate at the number of days that plow is used, which is also as important for the life cycle uh, 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 calculation, which I'll get to later, and then the average plowing speed, which was something that the that committee wanted us to add. So we have an estimate on uh, how long it would take to clear the the, um, the plow path, the plow route that was defined. Uh, okay, so then, uh, and this is and this is something that has happened most likely just maybe seasonally. Uh, or unless you're adding a new plow, then you would want to add that in there. But these aren't individual plows. They're like types of plows. So if you have a lot of plows that are similar in performance and cost, then you can lump them together into a representative plow, uh, not individual plows. There is a limit on the number of plows that can be used in the, the calculation. And it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a little over 15, but we I would stick with 15 or less uh, in the overall quantity of the plows. If you, put, if you put in too many, it'll just give you an error 
that you need to reduce the number of files. And that's purely because of the size of the file just gets huge when we do the fermentations. Um, okay, then the, then the last part of the, of, the, uh, of the libraries is the, the plow route. Now it's, in, it's critical or it's required that when you do the analysis, you have to have, uh, it's based on a, a plow route, which kind of makes sense. I mean, you're evaluating a plow in respect to clearing this specific plow route. And so to define that, we click on the arrow and it takes you to the define route uh, page. Now this page here has listings for the segments, which are the straight, as Ty explained, the straight segments of road. And, uh, and then you have the, the nodes, which are the interchanges as well. And those, those are defined here, or they're named here. And to, and to modify those or to customize those, you click on the arrow, which takes you, in this case, is the segments. And then in the segments, I define a two lane with, you know, with two, la two lanes, number of lanes are two. The lane width is 12. And uh, if you clear on the shoulders, left or right, those are on there and the directions. So you have, a, you have the, uh, the right shoulder, left shoulder, and the clearing direction. So if you're clearing, it, it, it assumes it's to the right. But if you want to go to the left, then you add in a number of lanes that are cleared to the left. And so this, this way, you, this is where you create your segments. Then you return, you have your, you see your, your segments uh, uh, provided here in this table for you to choose. Then we have the, the geometric road, uh, uh, nodes, excuse me, down here. And if you click on the arrow, it takes you to the nodes. Then here you have examples. We have four examples here of common nodes that we, uh, that we, uh, have developed from the subcommittee input. And uh, probably the most uh, uh, common one would just be a, 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 a ramp where you get off and get back on. Uh, so that's, that's the one type which is here in blue. And then we have one that's a, a fork where maybe you start out and then the plows split in different directions or they come together in different directions from different directions. And you can calculate that as well. And then we have one that we do in California. I don't know if they do it anywhere else, but uh, to save the number of plows, they'll actually stop the plow group at the ramp, have part of the plow group go off, clear the ramp, and then, and then back up and then continue on. So they use less plows in this direction. And then we have the roundabout, which was, uh, which was asked for. Um, but I think you're going to find that the roundabouts always, uh, when, they, when they, the tool calculates the plow configurations, it's always looking at the widest part of the road. And I don't think going through an interchange or a roundabout is ever going to be the widest part of a route. But if it is, then this obviously would be an important thing to add in. We need to find that down here in the green box. Uh, so in each box, it has you know the number of lanes, it has the shoulders cleared left and right. And I even have a thing called the windrow mitigation where you, when you're coming down like through here, uh, when you're going past a crossing road, that the, the plows tend to scoop a little bit uh, to not leave a windrow across this road. And so you could add in windrow mitigation uh, risk if you want along the way too. Uh, so now when you defined all your nodes, uh, now when you want to define a plow route, it's all you need to do is put in a number. And, and this, in this case, I'll do a very simple uh, two lane road as my first example. Uh, and then I return back to the tool or to the user interface, I'm sorry. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll add, a, I'll add a belly plow on here. Uh, you can change the number of plow, the type of plows you wanna, you wanna uh, analyze. Oh, before I do that, Let's look at our, our plow route statistics. So uh, we changed, we created our, our plow route and this here will show you the statistics of, of the estimated, the plowing distance of the route. And it'll, it'll show you the uh, max clearing width required on the right and the left, and then diverged lanes right and left and the estimated time to clear the route. And these are statistics that they are just shown here. Here, uh, and then also uh, on the plow, when you name your plows and do the operating costs, on this category here shows you 
the ab average daily plowing costs for each of these plow configurations based on all the data that was in the library. So you can see the name of the plow, the operating cost, and then you define the quantity, the plow routes down here. Uh, and again, I'll get to the, the, the uh, life cycle part down there later. But this is the part, all this information is what you need to run the analysis. And you click on run the analysis and it pops up with your with your uh, configuration, which is the most cost efficient. In this case, it looks like it's a 10 foot reversible head plow together with a uh, 12 foot head, uh, right clearing head plow with an eight foot uh, right hand wing. And, uh, it's, and it's, the, the daily cost for that is uh, 2,053. Based on the numbers that I'm using, your numbers are obviously gonna be different. And if you wanna see the full width, you can click on this and it shows you all the permutations or, you know, I only see, see how many there's hundreds of them. Uh, these are all the combinations of all the, all the plows that I allocated for the, the analysis and all the different combinations that are possible. And then with them, you have your cost. Here's the most cost efficient one. And it shows you the width, the overall width of that configuration. That's the maximum width that configuration can can clear and then the speed because each of them has a, a maximum speed and of course the speed of clearing the route is going to be only as fast as the slowest plow so that'll show up on there and uh, and you can like I said there's this as Ty explained you can look down the list which I'll get to you I'll get to later when the uh, with the application part of this presentation so we go back and uh, then we're going to do is let me do another example. Uh, Ty mentioned the plow instances down here, which is something that we kind of I came up with the word instances, but let me explain. If you understand that you, you know, your plows that clear right and the plows that clear, clear left are you know are, are important that you have to have plows of each type. And when we go in and let's say I'll define a route that has, uh, let's see, let me add uh, a couple ramps on here and the ramps, uh, the on and off ramps uh, will take me, let's say four minutes to, to clear those. And now I have another ramp that has uh, a diverging lane that clears to the left. So I'll add one of those and maybe that'll take me uh, three minutes to clear, estimated. And then uh, let's see, I'll do uh, left and right. Uh, I'll have a segment where I have to, I want to clear left and right. So I'll put in uh, five miles of that, that in there. And now when I return back, you'll see over here the plow statistics. Now I have, I have to be able to clear right with uh, 28 feet. The left on the main through lanes is 14 feet. My diverge lanes, I have to be able to clear the right nine feet and to the left nine feet. So there's actually two lanes that are diverging off here. And now when I run the analysis, you'll see now I have the most uh, efficient plow uh, configuration groupings for clear right, clear left, uh, diverge, clear right, and diverge, clear left. And I have a little, uh, a little diagram here that kind of shows you is is that you have your your uh, your your lanes that are through lanes, and and the uh, the tool will come up with. In this case, it's just clearing right, but it'll come up with the the plow combination, and that happens to come out to to 28 feet, and the lanes are 28 feet, which is great. But then on the diverged lanes, it it came up with this. Uh, uh, 12 foot right hand uh, head plow with a right hand wing that clears 18 feet, but it only needs to clear 14 feet. So we're clearing the full the full width of the highway at its widest part with this arrangement. But when you look at the, the lanes coming and going from this widest part, you're going to have 28 feet of plow and 18 feet of plow together. You have 46 feet of clearing capability, but you're only going to need to clear 28 feet. But that's just the way it is. You go down the road with extra plows, they they back up 
or they group together and maybe they're sanding or doing other things as well. But when they get to this widest part, the diverge lengths, that's when they actually spread out and, and go their way, uh, go their separate ways, and then they meet up again here. So uh, hopefully that kind of explains why we have the, the different groupings, because eventually the groupings separate. And at that point, you got to know which, which plows are getting off to diverge, which plows are on the, on the main line. And this shows you that. Uh, and you can also see what's the cost of clearing the ramps is going to become the cost of, of these two together combined, right? So you know whether what, what it costs to clear the main line and what the ramps are and together is you, if, if you clear them all at the same time, you'd be the combination of all of those. Okay, so uh, now let's go back to the back to our uh, user guide, which I was supposed to be following along. And now we have our DOT application section. Now we have, uh, I, I came up with four types of, of, uh, of, of analysis you can do. But well, let's first let's ask ourselves, why do you need this tool? I mean, why do you need a DOT tool? Your common practice is you just you turn plows deployments based on providing the sufficient plow clearing capability to clear the full width of the, of the plow roads. And you find out enough plows, it clears the full road, and then there you are. That's all you need to do, right? But the, uh, and the exercise is simple. But when you, when you have multiple plows, when you have multiple plow groupings that could clear that same, could clear at least that or more of the width, then which plows do you send out? And at that point, you're going to want to send out which plows are the most cost effective. And you know that's the that's probably the that's our type one. That's our our simplest type of of analysis, or the most common, I should say, the most common type of analysis is you're going to define a plow route, and then you're going to you're going to put in the the, the more plows than you would need, and all the plows that are available, the more plows than than you then are needed, and then the tool will figure out which which of those plows combined together is going to be the most efficient uh, grouping to send out to, to clear the road. Um, and uh, let's see. And then the second. Oh, and I should show you. Uh, so we ran this analysis with the four the four different uh, instances combined. And if you click on the view, click away and then click on it. I added this uh, this page on here. Where it does is it provides the first nine uh, groupings uh, for each of the different instances, and it puts it all together along with the plow route statistics of what needs to be cleared. And so, if you're making a decision on on which plows to send out, because as Ty was saying, you know, some of these uh, plows. Maybe you don't want to send them out. You don't have a driver for them, or, or uh, there's other issues related to the traffic or whatever that you you want to send these plows rather than those plows out. And this way, you're able to look at what the most efficient combinations are, and you may want to go down the list and pick them because some of the price differences are very minimal. You're you're looking, you know, you know, twenty. $20 or something like that. So you can choose any of these, but maybe some other ones down here are a lot more expensive. This one's $500 more than that one. So you're not going to want to send this one out uh, to be able to clear the route. And, and you can see also on the widths, uh, typically the widths, well, that's not even true. The widths, the widths kind of go up with the price, but sometimes in this case it doesn't. You know, it goes 28 feet to 30 and then back to 28 and 30 and then back to 28. So it just the width isn't necessarily just associated with cost, but uh, certainly when you get further down the list, it is. Um, and then let's go to our type two. Okay, our, our type two type analysis that you might want to find, and this is what uh, something that one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the committee members brought up is they had the, the example was a tow plow. 
so they have a tote they were going to get a tote file and they didn't know whether to deploy it on this this one uh, area of the state or this other area of the state or specifically one plow route or this other plow route. and so what can be done is you you, you define not only the tow plow but a couple other you know plows that you would need to be able to clear the full lane width uh, of the highway you throw those on there as well then you run the analysis and you can see you can see like in, in this particular uh, 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 route, route number one, that the that the tow file is not the most you know, cost effective. But then you do a route number two, which is a little bit different on the, the width and distance, and it turns out now that the, the tow plow is the most cost efficient. And if you look at that, the view uh, plow combinations page, you can see exactly or the see full list is on separate pages, but together, the view plow combination page, you can see quickly what the cost difference is between the two and you know whether it's a significant difference or not. So it, it kind of helps you by, in this case, holding the plow constant varying the plow routes, you can kind of see where the, the best use of a plow group or a plow within a group uh, application. So that would be uh, one type, of, the second type of analysis. The third type of analysis that came up was the, uh, the life cycle. And so uh, the life cycle is, you see it's here on the user uh, page and all these numbers were provided from the data library. So they were all numbers that were, that were customized by the DOT. Uh, but when it does the, the, actual, the actual calculation, uh, because all these plows have different uh, usages, uh, different uh, different service life, you, you can't di directly compare them, like comparing apples and oranges. So what we do is we normalize that. And we normalize that by giving it a time frame. And then we use our daily operating cost and using that time frame to come up with our life cycle cost. And so these, these uh, goldish yellow squares down here. Uh, I thought it'd be easier to do it in seasons and the days you use, you want the analysis done for in season. So uh, in our case in California, maybe they only plow, you know, 30 days or 60 days of, of a season. So you put the number of seasons, the number of days, and it comes up with a total, total number of days. And then all the, all the plows, and they're not all the plows, they're all the plow categories. I, I average all the plows in each category, you know, by, you know, a standard plow, a telescoping plow, a wing plow, a tow plow. I average those together, and then these numbers are the average of that type of plow. And then it shows you the, the life cycle cost for this time frame you know, over this uh, stretch of time. And all these values are, are, are normalized. And it, it accounts for the fact that uh, maybe some plows are used more than others too. And so, uh, so you'll, you know, they, the price changes, it accounts for that. Uh, if you use a plow once a year, another one you use 100 times a year, it, it accounts for that. But what it doesn't account for, it doesn't account for the advantage of plowing the road, which would be, I figured, implicit, you know, as far as. Uh, if the road wasn't plowed, people wouldn't get to work and commerce would be affected, you know, and, and I didn't get into the positive part. This is just purely the cost part of it. Uh, I think by trying to add in the benefit of plowing the road, that just becomes very subjective. And I've seen those calculations before, but yeah, I just really don't think, I think they're very subjective on, on what it is you're trying to get out of it. Uh, okay, and so that's the third type. And then the fourth type of analysis uh, is for uh, if you're trying to evaluate a specific plow type. And uh, this is useful for if you're trying to uh, if you're trying to uh, procure a new plow or additional type of plows, where you can you can put in a plow root, and then you can put a plow in or not have a plow in that you want and then run the analysis for a particular plow route. 
and then you can put in the plow that you want to get you want to procure and then you can see how how the cost of, of plowing that route is is impacted so if there's a cost savings that cost savings can be used to justify the uh, hopefully justify the procurement of that plow that it, it would provide an extra you know cost savings uh, for the, the dot to do that um so i kind of I, hopefully i answered uh, uh hopefully i answered the questions i don't know at this point i should maybe open it up and see uh, if anybody has any particular questions or uh, issues they want they would like me to discuss thanks uh Duane. um i don't see any questions uh specific questions or comments in the chat box right now um are you at is that was at the end of your presentation yes okay so uh again these uh tools this recording will be posted on the project page uh these tools are available on the project page um so and and uh ty said earlier that if you know if you do have any questions about them uh there will be uh they will be available to answer some of those uh as we move forward uh but um obviously the the user's guide is going to be pretty uh, a pretty pretty good explanation of how this this uh how this decision support tool works and between that and this webinar hopefully you'll uh, answer most of your questions. Uh, I don't want to put Doug on the spot or any of the other members on this committee, <laughs> such as Steve Spore. And, but but there are there are folks that you know if you have additional questions, you still can't get answered. Um, I don't foresee that being the case. But if you do, uh, please contact me, and I'll put you in touch with the right people on the committee to maybe uh, help shed some light on certain things. But um, I, I do believe that the user's guide and the um, uh, the webinar should provide you most of what you're going to need uh, to move forward. So not seeing anything else uh, showing up in the chat box at this time. Uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for your attendance today. Um, and like I said, I'll get this recording posted in the next week uh, and it'll be available for your viewing. So uh, before I do anything else, let me 